All right. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, this Tegrity will focus on Chapter 5, uh, entitled Research Problems, Purposes, and Hypotheses. You have several uh, learning objectives. Uh, identify research topics, problems, and purposes in published quantitative, qualitative, and outcome studies. Critically appraise the research problems and purposes in the studies. Critically appraise the feasibility of a study problem and purpose by examining the researcher's expertise, money commitment, availability of subjects, facilities, and equipment, and the study's ethical considerations. Differentiate among the types of hypotheses in published studies. Critically appraise the quality of objectives, questions, and hypotheses uh, presented in studies. Differentiate the types of variables in studies. Critically appraise the conceptual and operational definitions of variables in published studies. And critically appraise the demographic variables measured and the sample characteristics described in studies. So chapter five describes uh, research problems, purpose, purposes, and hypotheses. Uh, you will be able to identify these in research studies that you read. Uh, you will be able to use the guidelines that are in your textbook to critically appraise uh, a study uh, and the study's problems, purposes, objectives, questions, hypotheses, and variables. So uh, this will help you to get ready to complete your assignment on critiquing research. So what is a research problem? Um, a research problem is an area of concern in which there is a gap in knowledge needed for practice. Um, it must be significant. It has a current important area of concern for the profession. Um, one or two key studies that have been conducted uh, related to the problem that tells uh, what we know about the problem. And then there is a statement of the problem. And this identifies the specific gap in knowledge needed for nursing practice. And the author might write something like, there is a need for further for research to blah, blah, blah. So a research problem statement includes these three items. Uh, some sources of research problems. Um, you may have come across some already in your nursing practice. Uh, you're thinking about things that matter to your patients uh, under your care. So nursing practice is one of the sources of research problems. Researcher and peer interaction. Um, research groups, small groups. Uh, literature review, uh, theory, and uh, research uh, priorities. So where do these priorities come from? Uh, well, the NIH has uh, published uh, priorities, as well as the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, um, Oncology Nursing Society, um, other professional organizations, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, uh, the World Health Organization has published uh, research uh, priorities, and Healthy People 2020. And what is the purpose and what are uh, the characteristics of a problem statement? So a well done study will state the problem early in the report. So a, a research purpose is a clear, concise statement of the specific goal or focus of the study. Okay, keep that in mind. There's uh, also a justification of need uh, in the problem statement. It's current. It has significance for nursing, and the author makes it clear what the significance is. I've said before, it's a clear, concise statement. Um, 
It explains the goal, the aim, the focus, or the objective of the study. And it will the problem statement will include the variables that would be studied, the population that will be studied, and the setting in which the research will occur. How should the purpose of the study be described? Uh, in a uh, descriptive quantitative research study, uh, the author would most likely use the words to describe, okay, um, or to determine differences between groups. Uh, in correlational uh, studies, the author might have wording similar to this, to examine the relationships among X, Y, and Z. Uh, now, the last one, to determine the effect of, uh, that would be an experimental or a quasi-experimental study. Uh, if it had been an historical research, uh, the purpose would go would be written such as uh, something like this to describe uh, events uh, in a particular time period. In a phenomenological uh, research, the purpose might be stated something like this to explain the meaning of X in patients uh, with terminal disease. Here's a question for you. Uh, the initial and one of the most significant steps in conducting the research process is defining research variables, defining, uh, determining the feasibility of the study, identifying the research problem, stating the research purpose. Okay? The initial and one of the most significant steps is identifying the research problem. Uh, what factors contribute to examining study feasibility? So feasibility, uh, another way of um, thinking of that word is, is it going to work? Is it practical? Okay. So uh, when you are critiquing uh, someone else's research, um, you will be looking at uh, these five things. Okay. So number one, uh, you will examine the researcher's um, track record. Um, have they conducted previous studies in the area of interest? Do they have credentials? Do they have expertise? Second, is there a money commitment? Have they gotten support from small uh, grants? Uh, Third, uh, looking at feasibility, do they have subjects who are, are available? Uh, do they have the facilities and the equipment to carry out the um, proposed study? Or, or did they have it in the study that they conducted? And um, ethical considerations. Um, the purpose must be ethical. So when you're looking at it, uh, think, uh, are the subject's rights protected? Are there more benefits uh, than risks? Uh, will this study generate useful knowledge? Have they uh, obtained IRB approval before starting the project? Uh, is there informed consent? And is there security of the data? And last but not least is a time commitment. Uh, was there adequate time allotted to conduct the study? Now, uh, in a qualitative study, uh, the purpose has uh, slightly different uh, key factors. Okay, um, the purpose in a qualitative study identifies uh, the areas of concern. Um, it gains new insights into a phenomenon. It identifies the qualitative approach uh, and assumptions. And um, the purpose will differ for each qualitative methodology because of philosophical orientations. 
what problems and purposes are characteristic of outcomes research. Outcomes research should refine or generate a relevant knowledge for nursing practice. It's usually evidence-based and it's measurable by nature. So outcomes research, uh, really we have not talked about that very much, except perhaps just in passing. But outcomes research is a research uh, that focuses on the end result of patient care uh, and uh, the effectiveness and quality of uh, healthcare interventions and health services. Uh, the Agency for Healthcare uh, Quality and Research uh, is very interested in outcomes uh, research. Um, this agency says that outcomes research seeks to understand the end results of particular healthcare practices and interventions. So outcomes research uses um, evaluation uh, research, uh, epidemiology, and economic theory perspectives. Um, some of the uh, outcomes uh, that are studied are um, functional status, pain, psychological distress, and healthcare utilization. Um, the University of Iowa uh, does a lot of outcomes research, and um, what they are trying to do is uh, look at, examine, refine. Uh, nursing sensitive outcomes, meaning um, the diagnosis, the uh, planning, the intervention, uh, ca conducted by nursing was able to produce uh, this outcome. And they're often interested in, uh, you know, did, did this make a difference in, in the patient's uh, satisfaction? Did it make a difference in cost? Uh, what are the significant characteristics of the study problem and purpose? The study problem and purpose should build on previous research, should influence nursing practice, promote theory testing or development, and address nursing research priorities. So how is feasibility of the problem and purpose identified? Well, we talked about this uh, in a previous slide. Looking at the researcher's expertise, uh, do they have the education to conduct uh, a particular type of um, study uh, that they're proposing or that they uh, actually completed? Did they have the money commitment? Did they have a funding source? Uh, was there appropriate time allowed to conduct the study? Um, did they uh, have available subjects, uh, proper facilities and equipment? And um, are there any ethical considerations? Uh, that would support their doing the study or uh, counter their doing the study. So uh, for you, this is a very important slide, uh, number 14. What are the guidelines for critiquing problems and purposes? Okay. So as you, in your assignment, you have critique one and critique two, um, keep this slide in mind. Is the problem clear and concise? Is the problem limited in scope? Is the problem narrowed to the focus of the study? Does the problem identify the variables, the population, and the setting? Are the problem and the purpose able to generate knowledge? Is it feasible? Is it ethical? So just a few words about this slide. Um, when you're reviewing the article uh, that we've posted for you, does the uh, author state uh, the research problem clearly? Does the author state a research question? If so, is it written as a clear, concise, and interrogative statement? That means a question that is worded in the present tense, 
includes one or more variables, the population, and guides the implementation of the study. The question influences the research design. Now, in qualitative research, uh, they usually do not state uh, aims or objectives. Uh, in quantitative uh, research, um, most or some uh, state aims or objectives, but they always state a purpose. Hypotheses. So in your statistics course, uh, you learned about uh, hypotheses, right? So um, what is a hypothesis? It is a formal statement of the expected relationship between two or more variables in a specified population. It includes the variables to be manipulated or measured. It identifies the population to be examined and indicates the proposed outcomes for the study. Um, it influences the, the, the hypotheses, uh, influence the study design, the sampling method, the data uh, collection and analysis, and interpretation of the findings. You are familiar with uh, the research hypothesis. For example, uh, there is a difference between the treatment group and the standard group under these conditions. Or, um, so that was the research hypothesis. Now the research, the statistical hypothesis, you probably learned it as the null hypothesis, HO. Uh, there is no significant difference between the treatment group and the control group. What's the difference between uh, the associative hypothesis and the causal? With the associative hypothesis, it identifies the relationship uh, between the variables. However, in a causal hypothesis, uh, there's a cause and effect relationship stated uh, between the, the variables. The cause and effect relationship between the variables is stated. With group differences, they're naturally occurring and they're researcher controlled. So the main point about this slide is that um, relationships in the hypotheses are either associative or causal. Here's a question for you. Um, the feasibility of conducting a study is determined by examining which of the following. Availability of subjects, previous studies, um, researchers' credibility, and uh, significance of the research problem. I think this question should say uh, select all that apply. All right. So uh, would you, what do you say about A, feasibility? Is it doable? Well, A, availability of subjects, that's important, right? So A is one, right? Um, previous studies, no. Uh, researchers' credibility, no. Uh, significance of the research problem, no. No, A, oh, there's only one answer, A, availability of subjects. And I'll have you read the uh, information down below by yourself. What's the difference between non-directional and directional hypotheses? A uh, non-directional hypothesis, uh, a relationship exists between the variables, but the hypothesis does not predict the nature of the relationship. Um, you're probably more familiar with directional hypotheses, where um, in the hypothesis statement, the nature, whether positive or negative, 
of interaction between the two uh, or more variables is actually stated. And the hypotheses are drawn from the theoretical framework, literature, uh, or clinical practice. What's the difference between a null and a research hypothesis? So the null hypothesis states there's no difference or relationship between variables. It's also referred to as the statistical hypothesis, or HO. The research hypothesis states what the researcher thinks is true there is a relationship between the two or more variables, H1, and then maybe H2 and H3. What is meant by a testable hypothesis? Um, this hypothesis is clearly stated without the phrase, there is no significant difference. Uh, this should be testable in the real world. Variables have to be measurable. Uh, or able to be manipulated. The relationship between the variables is either supported or not supported. And um, the causal link between an independent and a dependent variable is evaluated using statistical tests. For example, um, Pearson's R, a t t-test, uh, uh, or analysis of variance. Uh, what types of hypotheses are these? Rates of uh, use of healthcare facilities by ethnic minorities are higher in facilities with bilingual healthcare staff. So that's hypothesis one. Okay, that's a simple hypothesis. The researcher is examining the rates and not seeking a relationship. Uh, the second hypothesis, there is a positive relationship between nurse attitudes towards AIDS patients and the number of AIDS patients for whom they have cared. So hypothesis two is an example of a directional hypothesis because the researcher is looking for a positive outcome or relationship between the variables. There is a relationship between social distance in families and burden of caregiving for chronically ill adults. That's hypothesis one. There is a relationship that tells you right away that's a correlational hypothesis because the researcher is examining a relationship between the variables. The second one, hypothesis two, there is no difference between attitudes of men and women toward caring for people with AIDS. Uh, this is a null hypothesis because the research is stating that there is no relationship uh, between the variables. Right? So the object uh, of the researcher in, with the second hypothesis, they would like to dis <coughs> they would like there to be no support for this. What are variables? Uh, you are familiar with this from your statistics course. So variables are qualities, properties, or characteristics of people, things, or situations that are manipulated or measured in research. Variables are measurable with instruments and or intensity scales. What are the characteristics of variables? Um, they are, variables are at a more concrete level than concepts, right? They represent uh, only a portion of the concept, and several variables may be used to represent uh, one concept. There are different types of variables independent variables, dependent variables, research variables or concepts, extraneous variables, and demographic variables. This is important for you to know and understand. So an independent variable is the stimulus or activity that's manipulated or varied by the research to cause an effect on the dependent variables. 
It is also called the treatment or the experimental variable. The independent variable causes the dependent variable to change. The independent variable does not change. It is controlled by the researcher. The research purpose should identify the study variables and what other key aspect of the study. Design, measurement tools, population, statistics. So the research purpose should identify the study variables and the population to be studied. And often the setting. How would you describe a dependent variable? The dependent variable is the outcome or response the researcher wants to predict or explain. Changes in the dependent variable are presumed to be caused by the independent variable. Um, your textbook um, gives the example of the quantitative study uh, by Bindler and others. Um, the independent variable variables in that study were height, weight, um, BMI, waist circumference, blood pressure, lipid values, C-reactive protein. Uh, these were measured and used to predict the dependent variable of insulin resistance. They are associated. All of these variables that I just stated are associated with insulin uh, resistance. extraneous variables. Uh, extraneous, well, they don't belong, right? They, they, they kind of interfere uh, with obtaining a clear understanding of uh, the relational or causal dynamics in the study. They can be recognized or unrecognized. They can be controlled or uncontrolled. If the variable is not recognized until the study is in process or cannot be controlled, it is called a confounding variable. Um, one example um, might be um, subjects talking to one another as the uh, study is going on. They may be influencing uh, their thoughts and perceptions. Um, an environmental variable is an uncontrolled variable related, relating to the setting. An environmental variable could be uh, the temperature of the room, uh, crowding in a room, noise in a room, uh, family issues, What are some examples of demographic variables? Um, you m are probably very familiar with demographic variables. They contain sample characteristics of subjects like age, education, gender, ethnic origin, income, medical diagnosis, geographic location. And the demographic data are analyzed to develop sample characteristics. So um, for age, right? Uh, they would uh, enter this information for each subject uh, in a um, database and they would compute the mean age uh, of the um, subjects uh, in the sample. Same thing for years of education. Uh, they would want to know how many uh, men, uh, males or uh, females are in the study. Um, and they could tabulate many of these other. And they can do this by percentage also. The demographic data are analyzed to develop sample characteristics. 
What are operational definitions? An operational definition, um, your textbook says that they uh, are translating downward to a more concrete level and it moves from concept to variable to measures and they use the framework to guide the data collection and the research outcome interpretation. So first let me define a conceptual definition. In a research study there is a, con a section of the report that deals with the definition of terms. A conceptual definition provides the theoretical meaning of a variable, often derived from a theorist's definition of a related concept. Like, for example, um, social network okay, or caregiver burden. Um, so, um, uh, in your textbook, the um, conceptual definition of uh, caregiving burden uh, is a long-term outcome thought to be improved by implementation of evidence-based coaching strategies by health professionals. Now, in another study, their conceptual definition may be slightly different. Okay? But they, they would state um, what theorists they, they are getting uh, their definition from. A conceptual definition is the abstract meaning of a variable that is usually based on theory, whereas the operational definition is a way of defining a variable that makes it measurable or manipulative, manipulable yeah, in uh, the real world. I'm going to uh, suggest that you look at page 155 and 156 in your textbook uh, for several examples. So I just gave you the conceptual uh, definition of caregiving burden. The uh, operational definition, caregiving burden of uh, heart failure, home care management, was measured using a 17-point Likert type scale with higher scores indicating more burden or difficulty in providing heart failure home caregiving. And see page 156 for critical appraisal. So how does one operationalize uh, terms? They identify the variables used to represent concepts in the framework. They develop operational definitions for each variable. Uh, they indicate the method of measurement or observation. And um, the operational definition must be consistent with the conceptual definition. Excuse me for coughing. How does the nurse critically appraise uh, study variables? Keep this in mind as you're doing your uh, critique. So as you are critiquing um, the study variables, you will look to see are the independent, dependent, or research variables clearly identified in the study? Are the variables measured in the study consistent with variables identified in the purpose, the questions, or the hypotheses? Are the variables reflective of the study framework? Are the variables clearly defined both conceptually and operationally? Also, is the conceptual definition consistent with the operational definition? Are the demographic variables summarized? Were extraneous variables identified and controlled as necessary in the study? Did any uncontrolled extraneous variables influence the findings? Okay, so chapter five, we looked at research problems, purposes, and hypotheses. Just going to go back to your learning objectives. Okay. You should 
look these over uh, and that'll help focus your reading okay look these over and um, you can assume uh, that your next uh, not not this coming not exam two but exam three uh, will start with uh, questions that have to do with chapter five and then six seven and eight all right all right thank you